Welcome back to the meanwhile ninth video about capacitive liquid level sensing. In the previous video we verified that our sensor set up here consisting of a level sensor and a reference sensor is indeed capable of measuring the liquid levels of liquids with different dielectric constants without requiring recalibration. Card here, link in the description. However, I told you at the end of that video that if you had a close look at the numbers while we took those test measurements, you might have noticed an oddity. And we will start off this video by first talking about that oddity and speculating a little bit about the reasons for it. Enjoy! And here's the oddity I was talking about. We have here the capacitance readings for our experiments with water versus saline. So capacitance here, fill level of the container here. Blue is water reference, red is water signal, green is saline reference and lilac is a saline signal. And you see they are practically identical identical, while water is supposed to have a relative permittivity of 80, while saline is supposed to have a relative permittivity of about 30. So we would expect for saline much lower capacitance readings that we don't get. Well, have we broken physics? Who knows? Uh, just in case you don't believe me, Let's measure with a multimeter my sensor capacity in saline. This is the capacitance of our signal sensor. Uh, can you read that? Measured with the multimeter. So yeah, 7980 picofarads. And now we do the same with water. Uh, that is water. Yeah, that's water. I cannot tell you how many <clears throat> taste uh, tests I did uh, because I really was losing my mind. Anyway, we are measuring with water. <laughs> 79 picofarads. Whoa! Another oddity. Please observe the readings of our microcontroller over here while I take the sensor out of the container. You see something? Yeah, the values are dropping only very slowly and they stay quite high. So I'm putting it back in. We're about at 600. I'm taking it out and we're dropping only very slowly and staying far, far above dry. And I can only reach dry when I really <coughs> dry the sensor here manually. Then we should get back to, yeah, dry reading. There it is. Ah. Before I attempt an explanation of these effects, a disclaimer. These will be just uneducated guesses because the involved physics and chemistry is a wee bit beyond me. Anywho, I've tried to draw here a very small part of a cross section of our sensor to scale to the best of my abilities. And we're looking here really at the cross section where the isolation between two electrodes is. So here inside the red ring, that's our wood core with a radius of 11.75 millimeters. And then the thin red line, which is 0.1 millimeter thick here on the drawing approximately, that's our 0.2 millimeter copper from two electrodes. And then here between the green lines, that's our approximately 1.1 millimeter mystery isolation. So here's my theory or better uneducated guess. 
the field lines here just where the two electrodes almost join yeah they are isolated from each other the field lines pass very close to the surface of our isolation through the medium which could be either air or some liquid and these are the shorter field lines that reach out here. Remember, the shorter the field line, the more it contributes to the capacitance. And the longer field lines here, which come yeah, from outside the screen and really reach into the depth of the container, they are so long that they only contribute very little to the total capacitance, meaning that a thin film of liquid here on our isolator while I pull it out of the container can still maintain the increased capacitance of our sensor. We can put that crazy theory of mine to the test. I taped here over the isolation slots another layer just here over the slots of that uh -uh, heat shrink mystery stuff and I did that on both sides yeah you see it's uh, getting a little bit more thicker there yeah you see that additional layer there just over the slot and that should in theory prevent that effect of a thin film of liquid influencing the capacity Again, watch the readings over there. And yeah, we're dry. And now we put the sensor into the water and we get a reading of 560, 80 picofarads. So uh, a little bit smaller uh, total capacitance than without that isolation stuff. And now let's remove the sensor. And we have exactly the same effect. So if it's even, yeah, going down slower, if I see that right. Uh, so no, uh, that's not it. As for why that sensor gives you the same readings in water and in saline, I have absolutely no idea. Uh, this heat shrink polymer is really some mystery stuff. I came up with some explanation, but this is even more outlandish than uh, the one I just showed you. So <clears throat> we just put that to the rest and we move on. To saving the reputation of our reference sensor technology. I mean, up to now, even if we measured water and saline, we had the same capacitance readings from both liquids. So that didn't count. Now I have here 96% uh, bioalcohol. So uh, denaturated mm, ethanol is the name I think in English. That should have a dielectric constant of about 25. So let's see what happens. 25, we are low as expected. Well, maybe it's a little bit more than 25. 100, so a little bit more. Yeah, 100, we are measuring, let's say 130. 200, we are measuring 230. We're still within 5% of full scale, so that's not that bad. A little over 300, we are measuring 330. Well, that doesn't look too bad, does it? About 400, 430. This is eerily linear. 500, okay, now, now we're uh, having a little discrepancy. We're going down to, uh, let's say 510. 
and 600 we are at 610 let's say 610 and 83 picofarads i'm a little bit okay uh let me let me collect the data uh, this is this is really getting ridiculous here I added the data points from our <laughs> latest measurement to my diagram here. So we have now, in addition to saline and water, we also have that orange ethanol line. And uh, here for the reference sensor, it's also one of the blue lines. I mean, look at the reference sensor. Yeah, ethanol, saline water it doesn't matter here on the signal the ethanol is a little bit divergent but i i say that's almost a fluke because when we are up here and the container is a little bit fuller we are back again to the saline and water line ah. Okay, I already ruined my reputation with this video. So uh, let me introduce you to my uh, second completely uneducated guess about what's going on here anyway. One more time. We have our isolating wood core in the center. Then we have our copper plates wrapped around it and wrapped around the whole thing. Also in blue, also isolating is our heat shrink stuff. And now I'm postulating that our liquid on the outside doesn't act as another type of isolator with a higher relative permittivity compared to air, but as a conductor. So what we basically have here is a conductive sheet that is slowly, as the liquid level is rising, shifted on to our sensor and creating a capacitive coupling between the two plates. So what I'm saying is we have here this fixed capacitor between our two copper plates uh, around the wood core. And then as the liquid level rises, we have these two variable capacitors here yeah, coupling each plates here to the outside conductive liquid. And then these two capacitors on the other ends are of course that would be the circuit diagram also by the liquid be connected and that's of course the changing part of the capacitance and that's our wood core wood core capacitance now how did i arrive at that crazy idea it's simple for example tap water here let me put a trace of tap water yeah, let's say two, three centimeters on here. That's a mirror. Only so we have a defined surface that is isolating and put my multimeter probes in here. Then we get a resistance of 2.3, let's say, say 2.4 mega ohms. That's just that wee bit here of water, okay? That's not much. And please remember, we are charging our circuit via a two mega ohm resistor. So if you have a full jacket of water, that might be conductive enough for these sub, <laughs> sub microamp uh, two mega ohm. Okay, now I have even a lower resistance here, 1.8. Water, tap water at least is conductive uh, to some degree and so is especially saturated saline i mean that should have been very conductive unfortunately i uh, thrown it all away fortunately we can put this second crazy idea of mine also to the test we simply wrap some tin foil on the outside of our sensor I already wrapped it around my head, so we will have no longer interference from uh, the NSA and the CIA. So I'm wrapping that around here to the best of my abilities. Uh, maybe some tape. Uh, 
Okay, relatively tightly wrapped. And now we ask our little Arduino what it thinks the capacitance of that setup here is. And indeed, <laughs> I wrapped it up here. I hope you can see it a little bit above the 600 millimeter mark. And we are reading here, let's say 52 picofarads for the reference sensor and let's say 68 for our signal sensor. Hmm. Just so we have at least a second data point, I cut that off and just eyeballed it and we are here at 350 milliliters and we are reading 51.5 for the reference and let's say 46.5 for the signal. And indeed, if we have a look at the two data points we've taken, green is our signal, red is our reference, we can see that this, but for the little fact that the capacity is a little bit lower than for our liquids, is almost working out exactly as expected. And the reason that was a reference, which has also a slight creep upwards. But yeah, yeah, works out. And the difference here between capacitance is easy to explain. That tinfoil sheet here wrapped around my sensor. Yeah, there is a air gaps. There are air gaps everywhere. And this of course, sorry, that is uh, <clears throat> getting into the camera. And of course, that is uh, decreasing the capacitance uh, compared to if that would be really wrapped absolutely yeah, air free without any air gap around our sensor like our liquids do. One last test <laughs> with methanol, so de uh, denaturated alcohol, uh, just to be on the safe side, uh, because I have no idea. Okay, that's a big splash, but anyway, let's measure the resistance before it evaporates. And we have, well, that's actually quite high, let's say 30 mega ohms. It's conducting somehow, but it's extremely, uh, yeah, uh, high impedance. But uh, anyway, that, that little conduct, uh, conductiveness, conductiveness that the alcohol provides is obviously, okay, now it's evaporating, so <laughs> the resistance is increasing. That little conductivity, thank you for the word, uh, that alcohol has is obviously enough for that effect we just discovered to work. That's, well, not new physics, but uh, a new mechanism uh, how <laughs> capacitive liquid level sensors work. Okay, now I'm evaporating. But wait, I have one more. <laughs> liquid handy here. Yeah, vegetable oil to be more specific, rapeseed oil. And that might be not conductive and it's also very different from the liquids we used before. Just uh, because I haven't done that before, let's test if the mirror is <coughs> conductive. No, it's not, okay. So rapeseed oil should be a non-polar liquid. While, oh, let me put a drop on here. Oh, this is gonna be so messy. Rapeseed oil is non-polar while all other liquids we tested so far are polar. And we will need <clears throat> 
to talk about that and isolation materials in the very least vi uh, last video of this series. Yeah, there will be a tenth part. And yeah, that's non-conductive. Ah, great. Uh, okay, let me clean up the mess and then we make a even bigger mess. You already know the game. <laughs> We are dry and now we are getting messy with some oil. By the way, <laughs> the dielectric constant of mm, vegetable oils should be about uh, between two and three, whoever you want to believe. Again, this will be messy. So are we at 50? Yeah, and it still says dry. That's to be expected because the capacitance will only rise very slowly because that stuff is not conductive and it has a very low dielectric constant. So I'm really curious if we get any measurements out of this sensor. We will see. Yeah, about 100. Is something moving? I cannot say. So 100, it still, still says dry. 200, it still says dry. Uh, we will have to have a look in an Excel sheet on the capacitance values. 300, still dry, but the capacitance values are rising, aren't they? 400. Yeah, they are rising, but uh, <clears throat> far too small for the limits we set in the software. But we'll see how that looks in an Excel sheet. 500, still dry. And 600. Yeah, it says still dry because the increase in capacitance was so little. Uh, yeah. Anyway, this would also be <laughs> the domain of specialized chips that can measure changes in the attofarad range. So uh, three orders of magnitude below the picofarads we are measuring here. And that's obviously beyond a pure, <clears throat> uh, uh, you cannot see it, but uh, yeah microcontroller solution. I'll come back to you in a minute. And here's the data and it doesn't look too bad for just using a microcontroller and two resistors. But uh, please keep in mind the capacitance changes here are really minimal. Our signal here, for example, goes from about 30.2 picofarads up to 32.9 picofarads and our reference here in blue, that's that scale, is between uh, 46 picofarads and let's say 46.7 picofarads. And I try to guesstimate average that out the noise to a tenth of a picofarad this time because if I had rounded to just half picofarads, uh, we wouldn't see anything. Note that our reference here has very little creep. There's a little creep here between 100 and 200 milliliters, but from 200 milliliters upwards, it's constant within <laughs> the precision of our measurements. And the explanation for that is quite simple. If we used a conductive liquid like water or saline or even alcohol, which is only very little conductive, that's like putting a metal sheath above our whole sensor assembly here, giving us a strong coupling between our reference electrode and the rest as the level rises. While now, now we are really using 
the dielectric constant of our vegetable oil and then the effect that the field lines for the coupling, the unwanted coupling, have to get very long comes into play up at least above 200 milliliters or so. So they contribute very, very little to any additional creep here above 200 milliliters. If we apply our usual math to the signal and the reference to calculate here in blue an actual fill level, green is the actual fill level, you saw that before, the error is astoundingly small. So we are here between plus minus 40 milliliters. That's a little uh, lower than plus minus 7% of full scale. So not too shabby if you just want to know um, yeah roughly plus minus 10 percent in real app world application where your fill level is however i had to adjust the gain here to 120 milliliters and the offset to 100 milliliters remember when we measured before with our reference and signal we used a gain of 67.9 milliliters and an offset of 75 milliliters in our formula. It's clear why, because we are now using with vegetable oil another principle. We are now actually measuring the changed dielectric constant of the environment instead having just uh, i come and do this again and again please no sexual jokes instead of having the equivalent of a metal sheath or some conductive sheath going up and down or covering more and more of our sensor so did we discover new physics or well at least a new working principle for capacitive liquid level sensors Unfortunately not, we just discovered a gap in my knowledge. So I don't know any white paper or application note from a chip manufacturer that makes chips specially for that application mentioning that effect here because they all want to <laughs> sell uh, two or three channel devices that can incorporate one or two reference electrodes i guess I also never saw this described in any textbook that covers capacitive liquid level sensors. However, the effect is known in the industry. I have here a paper from Andres and Hauser. That's a company specializing in making sensors for automation and it's called the Dielectric Constant DC Value Compendium. I put a link into the description. And at page five of that paper, you find this paragraph and it starts off talking about the dielectric constant. So in order to ensure that a change of capacitance in the probe is produced in sufficient magnitude for the electronics to respond, field lines going through our dielectric material, the dielectric constant of the product to be measured must be, that is the liquid, must be sufficiently large. With dielectric constants larger than 2, diesel for example is uh, 2.1, the application is usually uncritical and easy to handle. So we are talking here about the dielectric constant of our liquid and how it influences the measurement and it needs to be sufficiently large. So larger, sufficiently larger than air and they say for their sensors it's 2 is the limit. But then further down there is a single sentence. The dielectric constant, however, does not affect the measurement with conducting materials, that is fluids. 
In this case, a sufficiently large change in capacitance is always given. And we saw with uh, water, saline, alcohol, we always get, because it's a metal sheath, uh, I can't grab it right here, yeah, uh, a sh metal sheath analog, you always get a large increase in capacitance. Yeah. That's it for today. A whole video uh, covering uh, a big gap in my knowledge about capacitive liquid level sensors. But I hope you found it interesting and I was able to show you how you can actually do experiments and falsify and verify theories. So really scientific method here. There will be a 10th video and this will be really the last because then I run out of fingers in which we just cover some topics that I was putting off like how I optimize the resistor values and the measurement durations for our microcontroller code and such stuff. Till then, bye.